just a reflection uh, from the kind of yesterday's conversations. Uh, and we brought up the whole idea of, well, not getting stuck in our understandings of relationships. And during these three days, uh, I was kind of reminded by that, that, that no, uh, comment yesterday that we go, we're actually going to talk and be presented to uh, several ways of talking about relationships, which are not entirely the same. And, and just kind of as a reflection, I would like just to talk about the, at least three different kinds of relationships that we are addressing uh, during these three days. And, uh, and actually, I think today we'll be presented for all three uh, types of, of talking about relationships. Um, so so uh, one, one way of talking about relationships, which can be very useful for some purposes, is uh, kind of the idea that, that we have different actors. If we take, we have the citizen, and then we have well, different professional groups within an organization within an organization working in relation to that citizen or group of, of citizens. And once we start drawing out that we have citizens and we have different professions, and we can then start thinking, well, what ties these different groups together? And obviously, we're drawn towards the relationships that they coordinate, they communicate, they give each other feedback. So, so the idea of, of that way of talking about relationship that well, we, we could stretch them out and look at them and say, well, we have the citizens, groups of citizens, we have different professional groups, and they form relationships with each other. And we can examine what's the characteristic and nature of these relationships. That's, that's one way of looking at relationships. And I know Jody will talk more about that and how that can be useful mm -hmm. as a way of inquiring into the, the organizational <laughs> setup and looking at and, well, if the quality of these relationships are good, that has actually an immediate effect on, on the performance we can deliver uh, in relationship to our citizens. Then there is another way of talking about relationship which also came out yesterday, and that is a, a much more narrative way of looking at relationships, that, that we have different stories about who we are and who are the others that we engage with, and the stories that we have they can be professional stories, they can be individual stories, but these stories or discourses form and shape the relationships that we have with other people. So it's not just that we exist as individual entities, that we form relationships. Actually, the, the stories and the narrative that we have about ourselves in relation to others position not only the other, but also ourselves in particular ways that constitute the definition of relationship. And once we go into that, one, one thing we tend to examine a lot is how do we define the relationship? What's the definition? What can be done and what can't be done in the relational in engagement that we have? Not from the actual situation, but more from a narrative level or a discursive level that, that the discourse position us as professionals. I'm not choosing myself as a professional, the story in which I've been brought up to act from and to be loyal to actually perform me rather than I perform the story in that sense. And, and once we have that perspective, what we immediately are drawn to is, well, so what are the stories of the different professional groups? And what are the limitations of these stories? And, and what are uh, kind of these particular stories trying to promote? And obviously, once we start talking about relational welfare, what we are also trying to do is to create a different story of what it means to be a professional. And, and tomorrow, we would, uh, Otta and I will talk more about the identity issue of working professionally and what professional identity story can do but also can't do in relation to working in, in particular ways. So, so once we have that narrative perspective, we, we immediately start inquiring into the limitations of stories and what stories does to us and how they exercise a sense of power over our doing and, and, and how we can break free from some of the stories that are constraining practice and perhaps position us in unproductive ways in relationship to each other.
And obviously, working relationally and, and emphasizing the relational practice and the co-creative practice with, in our welfare uh, delivery or the, our welfare creation, uh, it, we demand something different from more traditional ways of talking that a profession knows what is needed and what is for the better of the citizen. Um, so obviously there is something at stake here which uh, means that we need to create new stories about what it means to be a professional. This is, this is under scru scrutiny uh, within this practice. Then there is a third way which is very much the practice way because the first two ways of talking about relationships uh, has a tendency that we draw, we draw it out or mm -hmm. we can map it or we can examine it as something which is different from the examiner. And, and that is start to start thinking that, well, in our everyday lives, we live from within relationships. We, we, we are not just in relation to relationships. We actually live it from within and start exploring relationships from within the ongoing practice of everyday conduct. And what does it, uh, how does it kind of, uh, and what's the nature and, and the kind of live practice that goes on viewed from the inside when the school teacher works with the children? What goes on inside that relationship from moment to moment in their interactions? And how can we examine that? Because one thing, we can sit here at a conference, but once, and talking about practice out there, but once we see ourselves in the actual situation, it is an ongoing, fluctuating, back and forth, and, well, in a sense, negotiating our way forward step by step from within the relationship. And, and once we are in that relationship with our citizens, uh, we cannot draw out or distance ourselves from relationships. We are in them. And what goes on in there constitutes who we become. Because becoming then becomes what we do with ourselves, but also with each other and how we take care of that. And that's a different way of talking about it. Uh, yeah. One word. I began yesterday with this, with this issue. I really like your idea and your emphasis on multiple vocabularies. I mean, I think that's very useful. So you don't have to have one way to define it. I think that's wonderful. I just wanted to put an exclamation point, um, and it may be working into your last definition, because what I was trying to argue yesterday, or to develop the argument of, that to get away from looking at relationships of individuals coming together, and rather try to take into account a, a process out of which the very idea of an individual comes, as in a dialogue <coughs> where it, we are mutually forming each other and you can't separate out what I've said from what you've said. So it's a, and it's more like, I guess, the continuous process you have. You can't extricate yourself from it because we are doing it together in what I guess you might call a joint action. <laughs> Okay, that was just kind of a small reflection uh, that came from yesterday's conversations that we can talk about relationships in so many different ways and perhaps we need a multiple vocabulary in order to do so and keep that alive because certain languages and vocabularies can do certain things in a particular context and whereas other vocabularies can't do that job and how can we be mindful and not getting stuck in a particular understanding and interpretation. Okay. Hey.